Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 13 of Midweek News for February 22nd, 2023. Let's get into it. First up, Meta announces paid subscriptions offering verification, promotion, protection, and support for Facebook users. And I don't know about anybody else, but I will likely leave Facebook before I consider paying for it. While it was useful once upon a time, I find it being less useful every day other than for business promotion. Moving on. For those Mac and Linux users out there that might be using Homebrew, here's an article talking about the major release of Homebrew after 3.6 and the new changes. For the uninitiated, Homebrew is the package manager that Apple should include by default in macOS. Homebrew is also available on Linux. Debian 12 Bookworm will ship with the Linux 6.1 LTS kernel. The release of Debian is still three to four months away. The biggest change so far is the inclusion of non-free firmware by default and the 6.1 kernel. Debian 12 is now in a soft freeze and early adopters can take Alpha 2 of the Debian installer for a test drive if they'd like to explore new features. Moving on. From linuxconfig.org, Linux configuration files, the top 30 most important. This is a good introduction to configuration files, although I will recommend before you edit any of these files by hand, look at the documentation for your distribution to make sure it does not provide a helper utility to make changes and always back up the original file to make it easier to recover in case something goes horribly wrong. Always good advice when you're hand editing configuration files. Next up from 9to5Mac, an article uh, about John Poole on why buying a Mac spurred him to create Geekbench and why it's still relevant. Mr. Poole refers to Geekbench as a compromise between ease of use and in-depth measurements and he wanted to create a simple tool anyone could use. And if you're not using your machine for games, then this is a perfectly good benchmark to have around. Uh, and it is available cross-platform, Linux, Mac OS, Windows, and there are mobile versions as well. Worth checking out, they did recently release a 6.0 version. Linux 6.2, the first mainstream Linux kernel supporting Apple M1 chips arrives. So there is both a slash dot article as well as coverage on 9 to 5 Mac. So if you've got an M series Apple Silicon Mac, this might be worth checking out. Microsoft signs a 10 year deal to bring future Xbox games to Nintendo. And I don't know what they're drinking, but uh, this is an interesting development. Maybe not for me, but for people that are really into gaming on the Switch uh, and people who have kids. This may very well be an interesting article and an interesting development overall. Athena OS. This distribution is based out of Switzerland. It is another security and forensics centric distribution based on the GNOME desktop on top of an Arch base. Uh, this is the very first release of this distribution. So from its small number of reviews, it has a 9.3 rating. And when I say small number of reviews, I mean you can count them on one hand. But if you're interested in Arch based distributions and security tools, it might just be worth checking out. And last but not least, the Ubuntu 22.04.2 release is scheduled to be released tomorrow, 2.23.23. According to every release I could find, Ubuntu 22.04.2 LTS will bring the hardware enablement 5.19 kernel and an updated ISO image for new installs, among other 
minor changes. So if you're an Ubuntu user, especially Ubuntu server, uh, you'll want to grab yourself a set of fresh ISOs after this releases tomorrow. And that, my friends, will bring us to the end of this episode. This has been episode 13. If you like the video or got something out of it, you know what to do down below the video. And I will see you next time. Have a great day.